In this video, you will learn how to set up multi-site in WordPress. What is WordPress multi-site? In simple terms, WordPress multi-site is a network of blogs, websites that run on one single WordPress installation. All those websites on the network share the same domain and server resources. Each site is assigned to a subdomain or subdirectory. The multi-site feature was added to WordPress in 2010, when version 3.0 was released. The idea behind it is to let web owners that run several sites manage their websites easily from one dashboard. There's no limit to the number of websites you can have in a multi-site network. And with one password and username, you can access them all. WordPress.com, a typical multi-site, has over 30 million sites in its network. To manage a WordPress multi-site, there has to be a super admin and a network admin. Here are the steps involved in setting up WordPress multi-site. Step 1 is to decide your network structure. There are two options like we had earlier outlined for setting up a multi-site. One is a subdomain and the other is a subdirectory. A subdomain looks something like this. Site A here stands for one of the individual sites in the network. MyWebsite.com is the core domain. A subdirectory looks something like this. Whatever option you go for, the step for setting up multi-site is the same. Only if you opt for subdomain, you will need to first set up what is known as a wildcard. We will see how to do that shortly. Note, subdirectory only works well for a fresh WordPress installation. Should you try it on an existent blog, you will run into problems. So, it's recommended that you go with subdomain as against subdirectory in such a situation. Setting up a wildcard subdomain. To do this, log into your cPanel, navigate to subdomains. In the subdomain field, type in asterisk and then choose the main domain for the setup. Next, click create. Alright, so we're done with step one. Step two is to download and install WordPress. This step is pretty straightforward. You just have to download and install WordPress in the same way you do for a standalone website. I will put a link below on how to download and install WordPress. Step 3 is to activate multi-site on the new installation. With WordPress installed and activated, activate the multi-site feature. To do this, you need to access WordPress wpconfig.php file and add a simple line of code. Access your site via an FTP client like FileZilla. By the way, if this is your first time using an FTP account, I put a link on the description below on how to create an FTP account. Alright, so let's continue. Next, locate the folder within which you installed WordPress. If you installed WordPress on your main domain, then you need to look for the folder called public HTML. And in this folder, scan to find your wp-config file. Right click on the file, then click view edit. Next, add the following line of code. Ensure you paste it just before the line of code that reads. That's all. Stop editing. Happy blogging. Now save. Close. And allow FileZilla to upload the new file with changes. However, keep FileZilla open as you would be adding more code to this file. Step 4 is to deactivate all plugins. To avoid technical problems, deactivate all active plugins on your website before activating multi-site. To deactivate all plugins, log into your WordPress dashboard, go to Plugins, Installed Plugins. Next, tick the first checkbox. Doing this will select all installed plugins. Just above the checkbox, you will see a drop-down box with bulk actions. Click it and select Deactivate. Finally, click the Apply button. Alright, we're done with Step 4. Step 5 is to configure the multi-site network. Navigate to Tools and then Network Setup. On the next screen, choose between a subdomain and a subdirectory architecture. But since this WordPress installation is not new, 
we will not get a subdirectory option, but instead, we will only get a subdomain option. Again, just like what I said earlier, subdirectory only works for a fresh WordPress installation. All right, so let's continue. Set a title for your network and set the network admin email. Then click Install. After the installation has completed, you will see the following line of code right in your dashboard. Copy the first block of code, block 1, to the wp-config file. Highlight the code, right-click and copy. Now go back to FTP and right-click on wp-config-php file. Click View Edit. Ensure the code is pasted above the commented line that reads, That's all. Stop editing. Happy blogging. Save the file and close. Click Yes. Next, copy the second block of code, block 2, to the .htaccess file. Go back to WordPress dashboard. Highlight and copy the code. Go back to FTP and then look for .htaccess file. Right click and click View Edit. Replace this block of code in the .htaccess file with the one you copied. Next, save and close this file. Click Yes. Go back to the WordPress dashboard. Finally, click on the login link just beneath the second block. If you followed all the outline steps so far, you would have successfully set up your multi-site. Your new dashboard should look something like this. The next step now is to complete the multi-site you've just set up. How to complete WordPress multi-site network setup. To add a new site, change themes or install plugins for your network site, you need to visit multi-site dashboard. To do this, hover above the My Sites link at the top of the dashboard. Next, select Network Admin and then Dashboard. From the multi-site dashboard, you can alter the settings of your sites. To do this, Navigate to Settings and the Network Settings. What you would see next is this. From here, you can set the following settings. Registration settings determine if subscribers can create sites in the network or not. You also get to determine how admins grant access to new users. New Site Setting. Here, you get to set a custom welcome message for new users and website owners on your network. Upload setting sets limit to the maximum file size admins within your network can upload. You can also determine the allowable file type. Language setting choose the default language your multi-site would be operated in. Menu settings if you want admins to work with their preferred plugin, check the checkbox, else leave it unchecked. Adding new sites to your network. Once you are done tweaking the settings of your new multi-site, you are ready to add new sites to it. To begin with, click on Site, All Site, and Add New. What you would see next is this. Set the new site's URL, choose a site title and admin email. Click the Add Site button. Adding Teams and Plugins. WordPress automatically assigns the super admin role to whoever installs WordPress first. As the super admin, it's in your power to determine the plugins and the teams to be used on the multi-site. To add a team, navigate to My Sites, Network Admin, and then Teams. Teams are installed in the same way as they are installed in conventional standalone sites. Adding users. You add users in a multi-site just the same way you would for a standalone website. In your multi-site dashboard, navigate to My Sites, Network Admin, and then Users. Add new, set a username for the user, then type in their email. After you do that, click Add User. To access all users on your multi-site, click All Users. From here, you can set a profile picture for the user, create a bio for them, and determine which user gets super admin privileges. Alright, so that's how you set up a multi-site in WordPress. That's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos.
Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.